What is good, y'all? Today, we have another crazy effect. We're hitting y'all with the glow echo effect again. But today's tutorial, we're gonna be using Sapphire to spice this one up. It's a crazy effect used for your music videos, vlogs, projects, whatever you're working on. Really great way to just enhance your footage and take your visuals to the next level. But like I mentioned, you will be needing Sapphire for this effect. It is a paid plugin, and yes, there are ways you can crack it, but you know, do that at your own risk. But before you get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please be sure to like this video, hit subscribe, and comment down below your favorite ice spice song you thought I was killing you? No. without further ado let's go ahead and dive right into the effect all right guys so now that we are inside of after effects if obviously you you're just going to want to make sure you have your clip sure loaded up right here so this it. is just a clip from a music video i shot and one of the key things about actually getting a good effect for this clip is getting a good shot of your subject with a lot of movement so right here you can see her hands moving i mean this like twisting turn thing and the camera is kind of like shaking with it these type of clips and just a lot of movement overall just the more dynamic and more movement there is in these clips the better the effect will be but without further ado let's just go ahead and dive right in one of the first things you're going to want to do is obviously command d to duplicate it and then what you're going to do is you're going to double click the top layer rotoscope now for those of you who do know how to rotoscope you can go ahead and skip to this mark time frame but for those of you who don't know how to rotoscope we do have a number of tutorials on our channel right here so you can go check those out right here but if you would like to stay we'll just give a quick breakdown Basically grab your roto brush tool icon in the top left hand corner. You'll get a little green icon and then just drag and color over your subject where you want the rotoscope selected. If you come across this error, you just have to set the composition settings. So hit composition settings and I'm just going to change this to the exact frame rate that they're asking of 97 and basically you just drag and color over your subject and a pink line will select the areas that After Effects identifies as a subject or a person or you know whatever that item is that you're trying to separate from the rest of your scene. You can hold Option or Alt if you're on PC to unselect areas and your marker will turn red and then you just simply drag and click with the green brush to select items. Once you have fully selected your first frame, then just drag your playhead a couple frames forward and watch After Effects adjust the rotor brush. If they make any mistakes or errors, you can simply correct them by just simply drawing over, adding or subtracting areas of the rotoscope, and then just simply continue to keep rotoscoping. And now this is gonna take a little bit of time, so I am gonna go ahead and speed this portion up. Perfect. And once you have finally rotoscoped your entire clip, go ahead and click this freeze icon right here. And basically After Effects will freeze and lock in all of your rotoscoping work. So if case anything happens, you don't lose anything. Boom. Once you have fully rotoscoped and frozen your rotoscoping, you can come back here to your original composition by clicking on the top left hand corner. And you'll now see that nothing looked like it happened. But if we do turn off the visibility of the bottom layer, you can see that our subject is perfectly rotoscoped out. And now now we can go ahead and apply some effects. Once again, Command D and duplicate this rotoscope layer. We are going to turn off the visibility of the top layer. So we just have the visibility on the middle layer right here. We're gonna come over here to your effects and presets and I want you to search up Echo. Now heads up, we are gonna be using some of these Sapphire plugins in today's video. Sapphire is a paid plugin. I will try to show you some ways that you can create it in After Effects, but the main effect that we're going for today really requires you to have Sapphire installed. In your effects and presets, search up Echo and drag it to your middle clip. Then under your effects panel, you're going to change the decay to 0.8%, and then we are going to create about five echo copies. We're gonna change the echo operator to screen, and then we can go ahead and leave the time decay at negative 0.033. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to turn on the top layer once again, and now you see we have some crazy echo effects going on behind our subject, but still it kind of looks a little bit cheesy and rough around the edges literally. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here back to our effects and presets and this is where our sapphire comes into play. We're going to search up blur and we're going to apply the sapphire blur motion to our middle layer. Now you'll see that boom everything's starting to look a lot more crazier already. It just looks a lot cooler. We have some blur going on with our effects and already at the bat you can see there's a bunch of different settings and values that you can mess around with to just create different effects. So one thing I'm going to actually do is you can actually change the rotation of the blur. So 
because she's kind of like swerving her arms like this, we're gonna create a little minor like uh, degree turn, like maybe negative 10 degrees so that the blur is actually going with her hands. And it's just stuff like this that makes Sapphire so cool. I'm actually gonna decrease the Z distance just a little bit, just so that we have a little bit more motion blur to it. And already off the bat like that, you can see this is really coming out amazing. It just looks all nice and perfectly blended in. Now, as I promised for the After Effects users without Sapphire, you can try to recreate this with just a blur motion effect from After Effects. Right here, you can use the After Effects directional blur. Um, it can kind of get the job done. You can basically just increase the blur length to about 85 but the only thing is that After Effects blur motion will only stay in one direction the entire time. And you might have to create some keyframes and adjust the direction to just make sure that every clip and every spot throughout the clip, the blur is in the right direction. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this for tutorial's sake, but still you can see that Sapphire blur motion is really just superior. The effects on it are insane. Now keep in mind, there are ways of course that you can pirate Sapphire. You know, I don't recommend it, do it at your own risk. But if you really wanna add that sauce to your music, videos then definitely find a way to get sapphire it's extremely helpful as a video editor to spice this effect up even further i'm going to go ahead and add a glow there is a sapphire glow of course which i'm going to drag right here and already off the bat it's looking pretty great you can actually change the glow brightness color which i'm going to change to like a little brightish pink so that it actually kind of matches the color of her jumpsuit and if we go ahead and turn on the bottom layer boom you can see it definitely makes our subject stand out and it's also really Really cool because it's a really subtle effect that doesn't take too much and it's not too distracting but it's there but it definitely catches your eyes attention just a little bit more there are so many different glow versions right here glow aura is another one that i kind of like it's a weird one but you definitely have to mess around with it what you can do is decrease the glow width to about like 20 and you can create some weird stuff going on right here. I believe you can also change the color. I've never really experimented with that. Yeah, I think white honestly works the best. Maybe if you do some really light colors, you can maybe try to get away with a good effect, but Glow Aura is a pretty good one as well. You know what I actually might add? I actually might add a Glow to Glow Aura just to spice that up. Yeah, that's pretty crazy too. So like I said, there's so much stuff that you can do with this here, so I definitely recommend getting Sapphire and just messing around with a lot of these different glow variations, distort variations, so much fun stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off. And one last time, I'm just gonna mess around with another effect that we can try to create with Sapphire. The distort chroma is always a great go-to of mine. I love using it. And it's just an amazing way to just definitely spice things up. Once again, I'm actually gonna add another glow to it. I know we have a bunch of glows on this, but they are turned off. so you know we're just kind of applying them based off of the effect that we're using right now so this glow so this distort chroma right here i didn't even touch any of the settings and already it looks pretty sick i might increase this to about two so that way we have some more like bubbles around her and that is definitely looking sick already. What's cool about the chroma distort is that it actually bases the effect off of the colors that are present in the original clip. So you can see we already have some of that pink jumpsuit shining on these edges right here, which is definitely something that makes this effect stand out a lot more. One last thing just to help you guys out for those of you who don't have Sapphire, you can try to use the chroma effect that After Effects just has built in, which is the VR chromatic aberrations. And if you apply this right here, you can kind of of get a cool effect and I do recommend adding some type of blur so maybe even a directional blur could help and then just increase that and just like that that's a cool outline echo effect that you can create in After Effects but like I said mess around with it have fun don't copy this tutorial down to the nitty gritty details. The echo effect is really an extremely fun iteration. Definitely go check out the past videos we've made on this before and with that said here are the final results. If you guys made it to the end of the video, thank you again so much for watching. Please be sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe, and turn the notification bell on if you already haven't. It's free, all this content is free, so it really means the world. If you have any questions or concerns, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Also remember to follow us on Instagram at 11%prod. We'd love to see what you guys create. Once again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.